This is Cecil Allen Moore. And uh, this here, we're going to call it American Outlaw Garage because I've used the term American Outlaw for years and years now. So I've got all kind of projects to show you guys and um, stuff to work on, some neat stuff. Right now, we're working on Project High Sierra. It's an 81 Crew Cab Dually GMC High Sierra. And we're doing an LS swap on it. As you can see, this is the preliminary fit. We pull the big block out of it and uh, use the factory frame mounts, all the factory clamshells and the factory block mounts, and uh, some $30 eBay engine mount brackets that convert it over and bolted them to the side, put them in a rearward position, and it bolted right in. Everything fits nice and neat. We're going to be walking you through this whole installation with part numbers you need, every little piece you need to swap over your C10 or whatever square body GM product. Uh, all the way from 73 to uh, 91 in the Suburbans and the Crew Cab Dooleys. Stay with us. Hit the uh, subscribe, hit the like button, comment if you have questions or if you can offer advice in any of this situation. I'm brand new to this and I need your help as much as you need mine. As you can see, we've got the engine shoehorned in here. It dropped in without any problems using mounts from uh, some $30 billet aluminum mounts I bought on eBay. You can probably see them in there. They bolt right to the block and they have several different mounting positions to uh, mount your factory style clamshell mounts on. And uh, so far they work great. Sit right in here. I think everything's gonna line up right. This truck originally came with a 454 and a 400 turbo three-speed automatic. And we're putting the, uh, the truck LS in it with a 4L80E overdrive. You can see my headers there. Uh, got plenty of clearance here. No problems. All that fits nice. The oil, print, the oil pan is uh, has plenty of clearance as well. All the collectors have plenty of clearance. I've got my sensors laid out. You can see up here I've got my pigtails for my... Uh, my PCM, my computer, the brains of the operation. Red and blue computer, you can tell that. There's the computer that controls all the engine management stuff. I've got some sensors laid out here. This is a uh, this is the cam sensor. Plugs right into the back of the the cam sensors on the back side of the engine, right down there in the middle, back where uh, your traditional distributor would go. And I have over here I've got the transmission harness. I've had to modify it a little bit. Right now, it's still got a um, part of a an old O2 sensor integrated into it. We're going to be cutting that harness out of that pigtail for the training. And here's the right and left upper bank O2 sensors that we'll be installing. We'll be keeping these. Here's our second vehicle VSS sensor, whatever, uh, speed sensor that we'll have to be wiring in to make the 4L80 work with the, with the computer. This is the knock harness sensor. The knock harnesses go underneath the uh, that intake manifold. The intake's not bolted on, it's just sitting here. We just kind of got it test fitted. You can see those wires in the back. These are my injector harnesses. I've got them all nice and tidied up. You can, you can barely see them. And uh, I've got, they're all labeled. I know where all the, the pins that they go to on the computer. Here's your map sensor. It's all plugged in, ready to be wired. Here's your driver's side bank cool pack button. Sensor and harness. Coolant temperature sensor. Now these are all needed to run this LS setup. 
is your idle um, air control solenoid. That's the sensor. It's plugged in. It's ready to roll. Throttle position sensor right there. This is the generator sensor here for the uh, for the alternator in the charging system. Here's a mass airflow meter sensor and harness. We'll be running that, integrating it. Must have passenger side cool packs. And this here is my crank sensor that goes back behind these headers into the, uh, there's a sensor that goes in the side of the block there behind the starter. So we'll be running that and uh, kind of trying to keep it all nice and neat. I'm still trying to decide where to mount this uh, ECM that's laying up against the windshield, the, the computer, PCM, whatever you want to call it. It's already tuned, it's got a pre-tune on it, and it's ready to uh, crank and run once I get this installed. Everything's shortened down. Y'all stay tuned, and uh, we'll show you more. Now, so far, the question I've heard the most is, how much wiring do you have to cut out in order to make this a standalone harness? And uh, that kind of depends on several things. It depends on if you're going to run an automatic overdrive transmission that's made for these engines. If you're going to do that, you have to have have to have the harness and uh, pigtails and all that stuff that go into that transmission to make it work. Computer also has to be tuned for that transmission. If you're not going to use that, if you're going to use a standard old style transmission like a 350 turbo, 400 turbo. 700 R4, anything that'll shift without a computer, you know, straight shift, whatever. Uh, you can remove all that part of that harness. I'm using stuff like it would come on the engine. So, heavy duty 4L80, that's the big deal transmission. They're damn near bulletproof. And the little LS. So, I'll show you how much exactly wiring I cut out for my application. There's more to cut out than there is actually going to be in this harness. What you're seeing right now is the amount of wiring that and sensors and plugs and all the crap that we've cut out of the harness. This here is not going to be used as opposed to uh, just the little amount of wiring that you see.